Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Friday, May 8th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. The models, they are not looking so funny. Take a look at the snow totals. They're not schmodels. Eight inches in West Virginia through Friday, May 15th. But the big story is before Sunday, May 10th, look at the snow across the Northeast. Yeah, it appears New Hampshire is the big winner. Also, Eastern Maine, it's insane. And that's the big story. Freeze warning. Northeast braces for record cold and accumulating snow. Ho, ho, ho. Isn't that crazy? It's May. And I just said, ho, ho, ho. That might be the late, well, next year. We'll see. So there's the map. It's not looking like schmap. It's looking like brrr, cold Saturday morning. That's just a few hours from now. A lot of you are going to be watching this while you're freezing your off. Take a look. Central PA, especially the plateau up at the Binghamton. Take a look at the Adirondacks. You're going to be 10 to 20 degrees in the morning. Keep calm. It's boom time. And it's winter in May. That's cold. Twin Cities may see the first measurable Mother's Day snow since 1946. Must be global warming. The chilly weather Friday is be the beginning of a colder temperature trend, which is going to last through Wednesday. This is not a one-off. This is a whole week of grand solar minimum in the Northeast, folks. I hate to tell you, but we warned you for years. Frost to hit the Corn Belt Friday night, forecasters say. Temperatures in the mid-20s expected with this cold snap is going to kill the soybeans and the corn that's already growing. Ah, I never heard of such a thing. It's such a rare event. I guarantee that's what they're going to say. The question now becomes whether the emerged corn and soybean plants will suffer damage in the mid-20s for more than one night in a row. Yes. I know that but for a fact. <laughs> from what I do here, freeze warning, northeast braces for record cold and accumulating snow. Americans across large portions of the northeast are bracing for an unusually late season blast of Arctic air, courtesy of the polar vortex, which is not there anymore. So they kind of got that wrong. That's in the southern hemisphere now, by the way. But the meridional flow continues and the breakdown of the jet stream is a better explanation not the polar vortex, but they, they're grasping at straws and they want to calm you down and say that this is still global warming. It's just a little polar vortex thing. In May, when there's no po polar vortex in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the polar vortex. Okay, freeze watches and warnings along with frost advisories have been issued for 14 states that typically do not advise against that. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Fairbanks, Alaska will approach 80 degrees while the Northeast is below 20. There you go. It's looking sunny. Residents worried as Florida wildfire chars 2,000 acres. Fast-moving wildfire in Northwest Florida charred 2,000 acres of land and forced residents to evacuate. Just the beginning of a normal wildfire season. Mother's Day storm will bring a month's worth of rain to Florida and probably put out that fire. But... There is this. Hurricane season is expected to be worse than normal. And it's probably true. Just like last year when we said it was going to be non-existent, and it was probably true. This year, we're going to see a few more storms, make a few more landfalls, and cause a few more people to move from Florida. That's all I have to say there. Latest snow on record possible for some of the North Carolina high country. Latest snow ever possible. I guarantee it will happen, and we're going to be reporting on it over the weekend. The same system that's prompted a freeze warning across parts of the area will produce snow in some of the taller mountains. And let's check out some of the warnings and watches across your region. Warm in the west, but cold everywhere else. Never saw that in May, especially from the National Weather Service. Well below average temperatures with widespread record lows are likely across the eastern, central, and southern U.S. this weekend. All the way till Tuesday, if not Wednesday. Basically, the eastern two-thirds of the U.S., an extensive area of freeze watches and warnings, along with frost advisories, are in effect. The dark blue is freeze warnings in 13 states. Winter storm warnings, watches, frost warnings. It's crazy. Click on your county if you're worried. 
cover your sensitive crops. If you're growing warm weather veg, eh, they're dead. <laughs> they're dead. Yeah, you, you probably won't be able to protect your tomatoes or peppers or anything like that. But cold weather crops should be good with uh, beans. I don't know so much. But these extensive freeze and frost warnings are uh, across, well, you can see it, a huge swath of the U.S. Meanwhile, above average temperatures continue in the west, in the southwest especially. And we're going to flip-flop at the end of the week. It's going to get cold in the west and hot in the east. It's going to be like, boom, boom. Wait till you see it. Wait for it. Let's check out the GFS model real quick here. In the northeast version. And we'll just walk it through day by day. Here's your Saturday morning. Snow's beginning to fall across a wide swath Friday after Saturday afternoon. By noontime, New Hampshire's going to be buried in Sierra cement. And by later in the day tomorrow, hello, Maine. It's insane. You're going to be shoveling 16 inches of cement, basically. So there's that. Then the second system will move through Monday night into Tuesday and bring heavier snow into the West Virginia mountains, add some snow to the already existing snow in May that already made you your mind explode, and you'll be wondering what in God's name is happening. Must be the lockdown. It must be that woo flu cooled everything off. Probably not. Now, let's check out the nation as a whole. The cold is going to continue, and you can hear see the secondary system Saturday night moving into North Dakota, a little bit in Wisconsin, a little bit for Mish. And the snow pattern isn't over because by the end of May, we're seeing heavy snow in Idaho, Wyoming, and the Sierras, according to the GFS models, which is good news for any of those regions that are in mild to moderate drought. We need the precipitation. It's supposed to rain here Monday, Tuesday, which is our boom day. We love that. Now, you're looking at the temperature, two-meter temperature anomaly shaded coming from the GFS model for Tuesday, May 12th. And look it. It's still cold. Don't let the mainstream fool you that it's just going to be cold for a day or two. It's going to be cold starting now where you are and continue through Wednesday. That's five days of May that are more like, well, March, February, well, whatever. <laughs> Depends on where you live. Seismic update, no quakes of note. So we're taking names and we're shrinking down. Really nothing of even mentioning. Worldwide Volcano News Update, we have a few interesting uh Upticks we want to talk about. Aetna is the first one. We've had some extreme ash advisories over the last 24 hours. Aetna has been pumping volcanic ash out like nobody's business. And the Reykjanes Ridge also about 36, 48 hours ago. Here. A little bit of activity on the Reykjanes Ridge. Now, if you don't know about that warning, that's the Icelandic warning, which is a segue into this next article. In 1110. A.D., the moon vanished from the sky, and we might finally know what caused it. Now, we've reported on this months ago, but we're going to rehash it just like the media did. A millennia ago, a major upheaval occurred in Earth's atmosphere. This millennial scale climate cycle is being repeated before your very lives. A giant cloud of sulfur-rich particles flowed through the stratosphere, turning the skies dark for months, even years, before ultimately falling to the Earth polluting crops, and killing the majority of the population. In this case, scientists assume the sulfurous deposits was left by a major eruption unleashed in 1104 by Iceland's Hekla volcano. And we've even brought that to your attention, sometimes called the gateway to hell, since its thin strips of ice ranks among the largest sulfate deposit signals of the last millennium. It sounds plausible. Only what if the accepted timeline of ice cores turns out to be time warped. A few years ago, one study concluded that a time scale called the Greenland Ice Core Chronology 2005 GIT-5 was off by up to seven years. And by up to four years early the next millennia. Wow. If this is where science is and they're <laughs> nitpicking like this, well... Let them pick the nets, if you know what those are.
because that's disgusting. Did you hear the boom Wednesday evening? I, it was a meteor, and we have confirmation, and let's listen to the boom. Shall we? It's boom time. A fireball seen north of Seattle at 7.02 p.m. on Wednesday, May 6th, caused a sonic boom. It's up here. There it is. Three minutes later. Watch this. Watch the bow light over here in the daytime. Now, had this been at night, what it would have been quite a sight. So let's go back to the bow light. Take a look up on the top upper left. Upper left. There it is. Wait for it. And that is just a sign of the time, sign of things to come. Pretty normal activity. We have bolides one to five every year that are witnessed and even captured on film. Now, captured on film here, a genetically modified mosquito that could soon be descending on Florida. Now, don't worry. They've never tested them. The precautionary principle has never been used, and they have no idea what the uh, re repercussions may be from releasing these genetically modified mosquitoes. But they said it's safe because that's how that works these days. Multinational corporations control your life. They control this lockdown. They control the media narrative. They control this world. They just took out Dr. Gordon Pedersen because he promotes silver that has no efficacy in um, the medical industry because we said so. Although there are over 5,000 peer-reviewed papers discussing the importance of using silver in, well, I'm not even going to get into it. So these schmucks, the multinational corporations that elect the officials that you think are left and right and center and all that nonsense, it's a game show, and you're part of it. And you know who they care about? Them, not you. Yeah. Very few people are making money currently. Very few people have enough savings to even make it through this. The lines at the food banks are through the door, and it's not because we don't have the food to sell. It's because we've shut down the economy on purpose, period. And now we're going to unleash some genetically modified mosquitoes during the whole pandemic because because this industry is still running, right? Bill Gates, Monsanto, Bear, et al., they're still running full speed. They're doing interviews every day. There is a new normal. And we're going to now unleash the genetically modified mosquitoes and you, and there'll be no more Zika and then you can get your own injections and there'll be, and then there'll be no more thinking ever. Stay six feet away from everyone. Earth's magnetic North Pole is shifting dramatically from a powerful tug of war between science and the mainstream. Ah, ah, the mainstream saying it doesn't matter. It's just that it, it always is happening that way. And people that are actually critical thinkers that are scientists with a background, been studying this for years, are telling you the opposite. Now, let me just point this out that almost every prediction we have ever said since I've made my first show, and, and if you could find one prediction that was wrong, it's probably a weather forecast for snow in a region, but I'll leave it at that. Almost every one of the predictions we've made on this channel has come true. And it's not because we're gloating. It's because we're science-based and we use science, historical documentation, and facts to predict the future. Oh, my God. It's like an unheard of concept. But we eliminate the dogma and the corporate control, which doesn't happen over here because they get funded by that. Corporate control dogma funds them. Now, Comet Swan 2020, volatile comet releases a huge outburst. Eh. No, it's not true. I mean, this is not, I even noticed this over the last few days. I was going to do a video until this video came out. So I'm going to do an opposite video. I was going to say that the comet was, I did a video about a week ago and I said it was brightening faster than expected and now it's dropped off. So they could claim that this little bump up in magnitude of one mag is a huge outburst. 
I mean, all you need is something salacious in the headline for someone to click on it. The odds of them reading it are like 0%. They're just going to click on it and look for pictures. Oh, my God. Violent outburst. Wow, look at that picture. So they show pictures that are unrelated to anything, and people believe the headline because people just don't read. There are very few critical thinkers these days. Hopefully, many of our subscribers are part of the critical thinking crew, and you still know how to read and stuff. But there are people that comment below. They're like, I don't need to fact check you, Diamond. I believe every word you say. That's embarrassing. Comet Swan C2020 F8 is not the comet of the decade or the century or anything. It may have another outburst, but it's barely going to be visible to the naked eye. People will not jump off buildings for this one. Pan Stars, which is headed our way soon, is the same. Is now brighter than Comet Atlas and still millions of miles away. We won't see it in our neck of the woods until 2022. And it is currently brighter than Comet Atlas, which is disintegrated into dozens of pieces, while Comet Swan is less than impressive. So there's all that. Hope you got something out of the video. Don't believe the hype. Follow the trail of facts and, and check what people are saying. Please, even if you believe in me 100%, I am often wrong. And based on the facts that I get the next day, I'm able to alter my critical thinking. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in this new world, the dystopian world you live in of six foot of social distancing, mandated bras on your face. It's a disgrace. We love each and every one of you. Don't kill grandma. And don't be duped into ID 2020. It's not even funny. I just saw an article that says, are you unemployed? Consider becoming a contact tracer. <laughs> I doubt it.